What's up everybody? This is Dan from The Recreational Engineer, back at you with another one day DIY. In today's episode of The Recreational Engineer, we're going to be using an old garbage computer power supply and creating this super slick benchtop DC power supply that we can use for our future electronics projects. The reason why old computer power supplies make an awesome candidate for this is that they already have a fully regulated 12 volt, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt power supply line. Not to mention, the amount of current these things can drive is really high compared to something like a typical wall wart. The best part about this project is it's going to cost you less than $10 to make. Alright, so to start we're going to take this thing apart. Uh, there's four screws on the top of this particular model. Your model may vary. Uh, this is actually the second time I've done this and the last one had the screws all in the back. So it's really going to vary depending on the model of power supply that you end up getting. Now that we have this separated, you guys can see the inside. So this is actually quite a bit emptier than the last unit I did. In fact, I can grab that right now and show it to you. So this was actually the last unit I tried. And as you can see, it's uh, significantly larger. Uh, and what's not apparent on the camera is the weight difference. I'd say that this smaller unit that we have here is maybe two or three pounds, whereas this unit here is probably a solid five, six pounds at least. And just even the insides, it, it slides out like this, which is much more difficult to work in, and the entire thing is just chock full of electronics and capacitors and all the coils and everything. So there's really almost no space to work in here. And uh, I finished it and it does work I have my, my pins here and I'm going to be putting the other binding posts on, but it's, uh, it was a bit of a pain, it was kind of a sloppy job. So I decided to start over again, and I think that this unit will be much easier to work with. So once you have your unit all taken apart, uh, the first thing you want to start doing is clipping your wires. Okay, so all our connectors are off, don't need those anymore. So now your power supply is going to look like this. Typically you're going to have a little rubber grommet uh, right where the cables want to come out. So you can go ahead and pop off that rubber grommet. You can slide all the wires out. If you choose to keep this rubber grommet for later, then that's, that's fine too. So, um, now that you have all of your wires all separated, there's going to be a certain color coding that's used pretty much standard on all those ATX units. So you're going to have a black for your ground, you're going to have red for your 5 volt power, you're going to have yellow wires for your 12 volt power, and you're going to have orange wires for your 3.3 volt power. Uh, finally, you should have one brown wire somewhere, and that brown wire is going to represent your 3.3 volt sense. Uh, all you want to do is just wire this into the 3.3 line. If you don't have a brown wire, not a big deal. Uh, the other last wire that you're going to need is the green wire, and the green wire specifically is your power on. So this is typically pulled up to 5 or 12 volts voltage, depending on how old your power supply is. And all you want to do is wire this into a switch, just a low, low amperage uh, logic level switch, and you're going to jump it to ground. And when you jump that switch to ground, or when you jump this green wire to ground, then the power supply switching unit is going to turn on. Um, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get all the bundles of wire separated into their corresponding colors and then I'm going to start stripping them and we will wind them all together. So the first thing I like to do is get all the grounds, all the black wires together. Now with the red, you are going to want to leave one wire free and you're going to leave that wire free because you're going to hook it up to an LED and that LED is going to turn on when the rest of the system has power. The other thing you want to look at is going to be on the outside of your power supply. It's going to tell you which uh, line is going to have the most voltage. 
And so if your five volt line has the most voltage, then you're probably you're looking at an older power supply. I don't know if you guys can see this one, but uh, this one has about twice the current going to the five volt line than it does to the 12 volt line. Uh, that means that this power supply is much, much older than something that would even have ran a Pentium 4 processor back in the day. Um, now, if that's the case, that means that you're going to have to put a load resistor on your 5 volt line, and if you have a newer power supply, you're going to want to put it on the 12 volt line. Now, because this is a switching power supply, in order to make it stable, we need to give it a constant load. And so to provide that constant load, we're just going to put a dummy resistor. We're going to put a pair of uh, heavy heat sink resistors, kind of like this. You guys can see these here. So I pretty much just put these on the back, that way the power supply stays on. Uh, you're going to need that. Sometimes you can get away without doing it, but your voltage levels are going to become relatively sporadic. So I would suggest, even if your power supply turns on without the load resistor, it's probably a good idea to run one anyways. I'll tap here with a sharp pick here. I'm going to punch into the center mark that I've led up for, for all these guys. Put a little indent. All right, so we got our holes cut back from the shop. We're just going to start taking our binding posts and putting them through. So then what you're going to want to do is take your toggle switch, take your green power on wire and solder it onto one of the pins, and then take any ground wire and then solder it onto the other pin that connects to it when you hit the toggle switch. If you do this right, then your power supply should turn on and off when you hit this switch. The next thing I'm doing here is I'm taking all the 12 volt wires that I've bundled together and I'm soldering them onto the back of the binding post. Once I'm done with this one, then I'm going to do the 5 volt line and the 3.3 volt line. Once all those power lines are done, time to move on to the grounding binding posts. For this particular model, I decided to use two different binding posts for the grounds. That way I'd have more than one grounding point in case I needed it. Okay guys, now that we have this all buttoned up, it's time to test it and see if it actually works. So now that we have all of our binding posts on, we have our switch and we have our two LEDs, it's pretty much time to rock. So you're just going to want to get yourself one of these computer power supplies, or the computer power cords, and you're going to plug it into the back, or in my case the side. Toss that in. Most of these power supplies have a main switch, so if this isn't on, then you're not going to get anything, and that's shown to us by the fact that our standby LED isn't on. So if we hit this, then the standby should come on, and it does, but you don't hear anything, and the green light isn't on. Now this is our main power switch, so as soon as we hit this, we should get real power from all the ports, so we can try that out. It looks like it's working, but we're going to want to actually test the power. So I got a multimeter here, and of course, we're going to want to put one of the leads into the ground. So I'm just going to actually kind of hold it in with the binding post, that's the beauty of this design. And then I'll open up all these guys here, and we can test them. So 
I'm going to put on to my 20 volt range so we can see that and take a look at our 12 volt line. 12.13 volts, that's, that's pretty good and it seems to be pretty flat. 5 volts, 5.21, that's good as well. And then 3.3 line is about 3.45, so that's also pretty bang on. Now again, this power supply has tons and tons of uses. So one of the things I used to do was do a lot of stuff with LED strips, these guys here. Uh, they actually make really good lighting even for cameras, but uh, this at least gives us a way of really easily checking if they work. So we can run these up, attach them to our posts, and if we hit the switch, it should turn right on. Beautiful. Another really awesome use that I use this for is for major electronics projects. Now, although you can get little wall warts, again, this thing is super high current. So what I've done here is I've taken two banana plugs and I've wired them up to an XT60 connector. So what I can do is I plug this guy into ground, this guy into power, and move this aside, and can actually use this to power the quadcopter project. Now this is another project I'm doing in a couple other videos if you're missing those and look at the link above. But basically, for this I can actually power the quadcopter directly with the unit without having to worry about having batteries charged. So if I hit this on, we should hear the motors calibrate. Oh, this guy's on. Listen to the beep. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this episode's one day DIY on building a benchtop DC power supply. I really hope this video inspired you guys to try it on your own and uh, start looking for old junk computers. Now, if you guys decide to try this on your own and you run into problems, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big like. And if you wanna see more projects like this and you don't wanna miss the next thing I got cooked up for you guys, make sure to subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you guys all in the next one day DIY.